The one thing that I've noticed when you kick the ball is you get the ball quite quite wide and away from your body. Yeah. So I'm just kind of wondering, like, what, what's your idea and thought process behind that? Yeah, you're probably right. For me, it's all about ball drop. So I find real a comfortable zone out there is to give myself some room. Yeah. And a lot of the kicking that oh, from fullback, it's kicking on the run. So yeah. you're not getting time to stay with yourself and have heaps of time. It's actually right yeah. having a run and either being able to counter attack or then thinking, oh, there's space over there. Yeah. I'm just going to place it out here. And it just gives me a bit more of a chance to really follow through, so. Yes, yeah, so you've got the ball at the back and then you're yep. trying to plug them back in their corners yep. and then flip that. What's the difference between that style of kick so you're getting wide yep. and then one when you're bringing it back and chucking it up? Yeah, so that's probably more the long kick where I'm, I'm, I'm giving myself a bit of room. Yep. But I think if you're looking for a contestable, you actually want to make sure that you're a wee bit more square on. Yep. And for me, sometimes if you're worried about where the ball's going, then you, you forget about your process. Yep. So for me, I just take where it's going out of it, because I know that I want it to be yep. roughly about 20 metres, yep. and then 20 to 25, and then for me it's just making sure that I get my ball drop right, yep. and try so to just try to take every other factor out of it. You're taking it back to the line, is there something you're doing in the last, like before you're getting to the line? Because I, yep. I remember whenever I was, I always had to try to slow myself down, catch my feet to kick. Yep. So you're looking to bring the ball back, gain some metres. Yeah. Then are you thinking slow down? Yep. So if you're, the, if you're the chase line, yep. I'm thinking I want to get as close to you as possible because I've got people that are going to chase my kick. Yeah. So I want to give them the best chance possible. So gas it to there. So gas it to there and then I know a comfortable space, which is sort of five to ten metres where I'm, yep. I can actually just stop and steady myself. Yeah. And then I can look to put it up as close to that line as possible. Yep. And then that's when it's just you just slow down a wee bit, slow your feet, and then get into your, your process of taking a couple of steps to then yep. with that, put up the carry on. Your that kick for you, are you with that trying to hit the roof of the stadium, like max effort, or are you like actually in your head, if I just put this at more, sort of my 80% bomb, it's probably going to be yeah. more controlled. Do uh, you think about that? I, I normally think if I can just tie my kicks, so it's yep. not a try and kick the the yeah. crap out of it or the leather off it so cool you know just slow down a wee bit and yeah. then just get my timing really is, is more what i'm thinking perfect so that takes me to the next one so you've done all that good stuff put the ball up contestable kick you've executed the kick well are you head yeah. down five meters of gas or are you actually trying to find that ball and then trying to get after it well when you've kicked it you know that it's going to go a certain distance and first five ten meters you actually just need to take off yeah. and you need to beat a bit of traffic because obviously there's a yeah the big, as Brownie called them, the big dum-dums that you've got to try and get around. Try, yeah, um, yeah. And you've got to try and, they're always, always trying to check you and make sure that yep. you've got a bad run at it. So it's avoiding them. And then after you've got through that five or ten metres, it's actually then getting a gauge because you've kicked it, you should roughly know. Yep. Even if you haven't kicked it, if someone else has kicked it, looking up. And then for me, um, I'm quite big at getting it from the right-hand side. Yep. So I quite like tracking around to the right, looking at it. Yeah, and right. then um, getting my approach from there. Yeah, if the ball's on this line flying, you're actually getting yourself to the right of it yep. so that you can get off your left foot to yep. get up. I reckon that's the easiest, because the last thing you want to do is be looking right above you. Directly up. Because then it's hard to actually try and get up. But if Perfect. you're either side of it, left or right, yep. if you, for me, I quite like being on the right-hand side of it, look up, and then, uh, then from there I can keep track of it. Once yep. I've accelerated five, ten metres, lock up and then I can make my approach. So if, I, if you're chasing a kick and um, obviously being over in Melbourne now there's a lot of chat around the AFL and seeing yep. guys how to, how to get a bit more height in the air. Yep. So there's a lot of chat around this knee and what you to be doing with it. Yep. So for you, like I've heard a few things of, of getting that knee sideways to push off a player yep. or also just staying square to get that knee on top of someone's shoulder or back and then propel yourself up. Yep. So what are you trying to do? Do you think about that? If it's one that I'm chasing onto, because obviously there's different ones where you're receiving, yep. but sometimes if you're chasing onto it, that's where I quite like to, to make, this is just a safety barrier really, yeah, so right. making sure you're getting up so you can um, obviously launch yourself if someone's yep. contacted you, then you can help yep. you know, prepare yourself upwards. So it's a more in the moment feel, so it's, you're yep, getting that. But I, for me, I'm, I'm sort of like on a bit of an angle like that sort yep. of thing. So you to making a bit of space. Yeah, making the space to then try and have a, a crack at it. Yeah. There's no, no one around. You've yep. got up and taking a clean catch. Yep. Are you trying to stay square? Because quite often I see players go up, so if you chuck the ball up, I've made impact. As I've landed, I've really twisted. Yep. So I guess 
You've gone up, made a good catch. Are you trying to stay square and go forward? You are trying to stay square and, yeah. and go forward. And sometimes it's a hard one because as you've caught it, you're just a wee bit, because you, you've always looked at where the ball is, you don't actually know the traffic around you. Yeah, so sure. you want to make sure that first off, that when you've gone up, that you protect the ball. Because yeah. the last thing you want to do is, is catch it and then yeah. someone's right there and they've, they've stripped it from you and then you've undone all that good work of catching it. So yeah. for me, once you've caught it, you come down and then it's knowing where your surroundings are. And, and if, you, if you sort of forward but get a stable base as you land, then you know you can start to look around you and you actually find that people are with you and that you can yep. then look to offload and keep momentum going so you can get through those channels. Yeah. One thing that gets talked about a little bit is when people are actually catching the ball. Um, so for you, when you're actually receiving and taking it, are you yep. at the pinnacle of your jump or on the way up? You're near the end of the way up. Yep. So you pretty much, you're just at that final Give that final climb to, yeah. to actually get up there and yeah. I think the more repetition you do the easier you find that stuff of yeah. knowing when the timing's right and because that's key isn't it having a bit of a safe space because you can't get touched obviously when you're in the air if yep. you're in the air so the longer you're in there yeah once you've actually made the catch you've got a bit of time to then assess feel um, yeah make a decision yeah and I think with yeah. a lot of the catches you know probably a few years ago have, have been here so as yeah. you're getting up you're getting to here yeah but as as this game gets a lot more competitive in the air, you've got to make sure that you're getting up yep. and you're actually taking the ball up here and giving yourself that protection at the same time. Yeah, for sure. Because if me and you are both going up yep. and I'm here and you're up yeah. here and we're both jumping, Advantage. you're going to win it. Yeah. So it's making sure that you know when yep. to take that um, above your head. Uh, a little bit of chat about the high wall. So you've gone up. I guess before that's happening, a lot of fullbacks need to deal with their wingers. Yep. So as a fullback, what are you wanting from your support players or, or people that are back there, usually your wingers? So what do you want from them? Um, so as you're catching it, you just want to know where the space is. So um, I used to get told time. So if time, I, yeah. If I had time. Yeah. Well, that's as you before you've caught it, you want to know if you've got time just to catch it, and then there's no no yep. D coming. Yeah. No defence. Or if you do have to get up. Yep. Um, You've, you've got a long kick, you've got time to stay on your feet. What are you doing there with, with your catch? Getting yourself side on, are you promoting one side of your body? What are you doing with your hands as well? I think if you've got time, you've got a bit of an actual chance to catch it. And if you can, you want to catch it so that you're in a, a chance to catch it and go forward and take the space up because you know that there's a bit of space there. Right, yeah. So you don't want to be catching it, going backwards, and then have to turn around and go forwards. Right, so just you want to make sure that you're getting it. Like it. And all of a sudden you're hearing a time call, then all of a sudden you just want to square yourself up to catch it, yeah. to then actually go forward rather than lose momentum. Yeah, that's a great point of actually picking up a few split seconds rather than, because you see a lot of it, people get really side on, yeah. come back here and then explode, whereas what yeah. you're saying is I'm just going to be positive yeah. and then attack it once I've actually got the ball. Yeah, I've heard this time, so I trust in my call, trust yeah. in my wings or whoever's made that call and I'm just going to go forward to start with. So we quite often see you just turning up on the field in random places. Um, a lot of fullbacks are, are trying to do that fullback job really well and also not get in trouble from their coach of not doing their job. Yep. So I guess for you, when's that time to, to go looking for work to, to pop up out of nowhere? You do a lot of stuff there in Smith just um, in the 22 when things get exciting. Yeah. So I guess what's going on in your head and thought process around that and getting involved and going and, and getting, getting around it? Yeah, the older I've got, Bruni, the, the, <laughs> probably the smarter I've got as far as I just want to try and be involved and try and yep. bring something to the team and I think there's different ways that you can do that. So sure. obviously from counter we've talked about there's ways we can impact as a back three there but yep. when we get down into the 22, um, a lot of the team structure is around all being threats and all being able to um, be attacking threats. So I think it's sniffing around rucks or sniffing around a 10 and then if, if you're looking at those zones and they're pretty uh, marked up, then it's actually getting wider yeah, and being a, an option off a 10 and, and yeah. getting it to the space to then give your wingers some opportunity. So yeah. um, for me, it's always that sort of process, looking around the ruck, looking around 10, uh, okay, and then just weighing up where the best option is. And I think for 15s, it's always, I'm lucky at the blind side too, it's like yeah, sure. forwards are tracking around the same way, all of a sudden yeah. opens up and you want to make sure that as a 15 yeah. or a 10 that you've got the chance to I, swing back. I think as a 10 as well, like the, you always have that switch call and a lot of 15s are just <coughs> a little bit scared to use it, but I, I yeah. find as a 10, if I've got a 15 who's taking a bit of control, taking the ball at, at times in games, yeah. it sort of frees you up a little bit to not have to be constantly driving the team around. Yeah. So that, yeah, it's gold.
One thing you guys do extremely well, both the Highlanders and All Blacks, is quick tap. So whenever you guys get a penalty advantage, you're always, yeah. I want to be a part of this and, and get into that ball, I guess. Yeah, I suppose it's a, it's a free play, like that's the way you've got to look at it. If, if there's a free kick or a, or a penalty advantage yeah. and everyone's knocked off and they've checked out of the game, then it's a chance where you can actually speed up the game and use it to your advantage. So yeah, sure. oh, there's nothing better when all, all of a sudden you've got a turnover ball Green or you've got yeah. a penal, penalty advantage. I think that's when, as backs, we get really excited and I know the forwards get excited sometimes too because that's a, that's a free play, so we can. Yeah. Oh, there's, there's many ways you can do it. But um, I think Nuggie's good at reading when... Um, their forwards might may be dropping off too, so yeah. he sometimes um, might milk it to then Let's to go, then yeah. to stop it, to then speed it up to, to quick tap and go again. Yeah, um, sure. And because Nuggie's pretty good at that, I'm always looking for that opportunity and trying to yeah, sure. try and be there when he does it. I, I think like with training, like when you're doing anything at training, the more you can actually build into one drill, yeah. like if you can do a high ball that turns into a passing drill at the same time, and then like talking to our strength and conditioning coach, sometimes yeah. if you haven't got your sprints up in a training, right. it's actually just taking off for 15, 20 metres, right. getting it in there, and then it's, it's less time on, on the feet and you're actually getting the most out of just that one drill. That's right. So you're getting your speed, you're getting your passing, and yeah. you're getting your high ball catch. That often we, like we catch our high ball and use a, a turtle, yeah. and then from there it's getting off the turtle, and then sometimes making sure that just you're easy. finding a winger yeah. or someone that's you know, available to actually then keep the ball alive. So that might be a, a short pass. So it's practicing that, that skill of getting up and then yeah. if you can bounce down, it might just be a pop or it might be actually just steadying yourself and it's a good way to actually get into that yeah. to then throw a longer ball to yeah, a sure. wing that can keep it going. I feel like that's such an important thing, eh? Like you, we put, you do reps and reps of high ball, but actually yeah. having that job after the job is yeah. really important. So like you've talked about, getting up, getting that knee up, making a clean catch, not twisting, and then having, yeah. having players at training that can help you with long pass, short pass, yep. to job after the job. As I'm speaking to more and more people about skills, is, is actually realising everyone's been through a bit of hardship. Like Aaron Smith uh, missed out on a lot of teams. I myself missed out on Otago three times in a row, and yeah. then you finally get it. So it's not, um, I think a lot of uh, kids and young people see professionals and just think, oh, they just went walk straight into it. Yep. So I guess um, just from you, like, what was sort of your hardship moment going through your career? Obviously, you've had some really good rewards, yep. but what was kind of that moment where you're like, man, am I on the right path here? Or when I was younger, I actually, um, I think it was an under 16 team, uh, Targo team, and I went out and I trialed, and I actually I missed out on that. So um, that sort of uh, sort of a little bit of a fight. Oh, like all I wanted to do was play for Targo when I was younger, sort yeah. of. Um, I just wanted the opportunity to do that and yeah. so um, I sort of thought oh, I got an opportunity to go up to North Otago um, That's right, and yeah. played, played uh, under 16s I think it was back then and That's right, yeah. it, was actually, it was actually a real good opportunity to get up there and uh, yeah. meet some good people. Great place. Um, it's right. a great place <laughs> um, but it sort of yeah it, it just probably um, it, it just meant that I had to go through something like that to, to, to get better and um, uh, I think uh, if you don't get bitter about it and you just look at it as a chance to get better, then yeah, sure. um, that can really help. And I think you, there wouldn't be too many rugby players that you talk to that haven't been through some hardship. Yeah. Because um, in any team, it might just be um, a couple of coaches that if, if they don't see um, the potential or That's right, yeah. um, they don't see the value add that you have in a team, then um, they might pick someone else. But I don't think to get too, yeah. too concerned about that and just keep on keep on tracking and that there will be opportunities as long as you um, do the work and, and keep enjoying it, that's, that's yeah. the main thing. I think that's often the way, eh, that quite often your selection is one man's opinion and it's really hard to, to think that way and understand that, that from an outside looking in, you just get, get so wound up about it. So exactly right, like everyone's been through a hard time where they just have to make a decision, right, this is out of my control at the moment, but yeah. I'll do everything I can gym training to just get myself ready for the next opportunity. Yeah, I think that's the thing, like you, the only thing you control, control is what you do, so yeah. um, as you said, just get, get stuck into the gym and, and your skills and yeah. the stuff that you've shown me here today will, will help a lot of guys at, at home.